As you can see, we're working on an engine that's already out of the bike. The first thing we're going to do is remove the spark plug so it's easier to turn. start off by removing the cylinder head cover. So we're going to have to remove these six bolts. There's four here and then these two right here. We're going to use a six millimeter Allen, but first we have to remove all these trim pieces. When you remove the cover, you just want to pry up, but you want to make sure that you don't damage the gasket that's growing around. Also, you want to make sure you don't lose the rubber O-rings if you're going to reuse them. If this gasket is still pliable, you can still use it. If it's dry and hard and cracking, you want to go ahead and replace it. Next, we're going to remove these three 7 millimeter bolts so that we can turn the engine by hand. With that cover removed, you will be able to spin that engine. You want to use a 19 millimeter and only turn clockwise. Make sure you're using that 19 millimeter and you're not spinning this little bolt. On this signal generator rotor, you have an RT and an LT, and you want to spin it until the RT comes um, right in line with the center of this pickup. Okay, so as you can see up here, there are notches on this cam and they are facing out right now. So there's one here and there's one here. We want to get them so that they're both facing on the inside. To do that, we need to spin this all the way around so that RT goes back to where it is and this will move 180 degrees. So I turn this one full turn, and as you can see, our cam notches are facing together. So with the notches on the cam pointing inwards, you can check the valves on the right-hand side, the exhaust and the intake, and on the left-hand side, you'll just check the intake. All right, so right now we're going to check the specifications on our three valves. Um, I've taken out the sizes I need from my feeler gauge just to make it easy. And the specs are 0.03 to 0.08 millimeters. Now on the exhaust valves, you want to run them at the maximum spec just so you don't burn a valve. So I have right here the 0.08 millimeter. And I'm going to stick it in. And it slides in nicely. So I'm going to go to the next size up and see if that fits, which it doesn't. So I know that this one is in spec. So on our intake, I'm going to do the same thing. Run this in. This one doesn't fit, and that one doesn't fit either. So just keep going down until 
you find if it fits and that doesn't fit so I'll go to the sides down from that and those don't fit either so if the lowest spec doesn't fit you'll know that you'll need to go ahead and change those shims Alright, so to check our left hand side exhaust valve, we need to go ahead and spin the engine until the RT lines up once again on the middle of the pickup and the cam notches are facing the outside. So once again, the specification is the same, 0.03 to 0.08 millimeters, and I'm going to check to the 0.08, and that doesn't fit, so I'm going to go again, size down, and that slides. So it's still within spec. When I checked these two valves, they were below spec. I didn't have a feeler gauge small enough to know what they were, but I know there is clearance because these little buckets move back and forth. So that's a really good sign. If all you're doing is a valve clearance adjustment, at this point you want to go ahead and take out the shims and see what size they are. So I'm first going to stick in a paper towel to help us not drop anything in there. So to start, you're going to align your bucket so the notch is in easy access and we're going to be using a valve shim tool. Now this tapered sleeve you want to make sure is on top of the shim bucket and this side is butted up against the shim. So I'm going to put all of that. I'm going to go ahead and press down. And sometimes it might take a try or two. Once that's down, you can lift up your shim, hold it in place, and I like to use a magnet to go ahead and pull it out. From here you can clean it off and check the size. The new Suzuki shim is clearly marked with the size. The one we have is so worn that we can't figure out what it is, so we'll use a measuring caliber. And as you can see, it's 260. So in our valve, we're going to use about 250 or a 255. go ahead and turn the engine. You'll feel a little bit of resistance. If there's too much, you want to stop in case something's wrong. So let's go ahead and spin it two turns. I spun this once at the RT, which means that our notches and our cams are facing out. I've lined up the RT here. At this point you want to check all your valve clearances just like you did before. We're going to install our cylinder head cover. First we're going to put some liquid gasket, a dab in each of the cam journal corners.
You want to make sure that that gasket stays in place. Next, you're going to put in your, all your bolts. You'll notice that there's a long and a short one. Long ones will go here and on this side. Once you have your bolts in finger tight, go ahead and torque them to 10 to 11 foot pounds. Make sure you go in a crisscross pattern. Finally, you can go ahead and install your side cover and your spark plugs.